Hello guys, in this video we'll learn about exception filters in Next.js. Starting with what exception filters are, we move on to how to implement them and different ways we can apply the exception filters. Exception filter is the piece of code that will catch or handle the exceptions in your code and return proper response to the client. Some of the use cases for exception filters is to control the response you send to the client. For example, instead of returning the exception the way it is, you can decide to return, let's say, a message and a status code or something like that. So you decide what you want to return. Another use case is for logging. When you cache an exception in the filter, you can log the entire exception while returning what needs to be returned to the client. And the last but not the least among the use cases I can remember is your preferred JSON schema. You can decide to return a specific structure of JSON as response when an exception happens. This is some of the things you can control with an exception filter. Next.js out of the box already has an exception filter. We are going to test this built-in exception filter and also implement our own. Starting with the built-in exception filter, what happens is that when you have an unhandled exception, the built-in exception filter will kick in and return a JSON response of this structure. So the status code is always going to be 500 with this message internal server error. By default, the built-in filter will handle HTTP exceptions and its subclasses. That is the classes that extend the HTTP exception class. Also, it will um, handle exception that has this field, status code and message. So when we throw any exception that contains these two fields, it is also going to handle it. To test the built-in exception filter, let me go ahead and throw HTTP exception and subclasses of it. So I'll head over here in this route handler, instead of returning the JSON data, I'm going to throw an exception. I'll head over to Postman and call the endpoint localhost 3000. You can see that we get 403 forbidden. Let me confirm. That is the status code we have here forbidding. We can do something similar by throwing the subclass of HTTP exception. For example, the bad request exception. If you go into the bad request exception, you will notice that it extends HTTP exception. Just like the bad request exception, there are other built-in classes that extends the HTTP exception class. These are the built-in classes. So when you throw any of these classes, you are guaranteed that they extend the HTTP exception class. I'll head over to Postman and call the endpoint again. Initially, we got a 403 forbidden. Now we should get a 400 bad request because that is the exception thrown here. With this, we have a confirmation that the built-in exception filter works. What I want to do next is to throw something that is not HTTP exception, but has the two fields, message and status code. If you could remember, we say that if it has those two fields, the, the exception will also be handled. So let me go ahead and see if what is thrown here, that is the, the message, let me put bad request, put something here, and status code 400 will be returned. I'll go ahead and send the request. I get exactly this. Now to verify this, that is that this is working because I have these two fields. Let me put something else in the message. I'm just going to put X there. And let's try again. Before we got 400 bad request with the message we passed to the, to the exception. But if I send this now, you notice something different. It kicks in, the default error message kicks in. The status code changes to 500, which is the default, and message is internal server error. That is not what we have here. So it was working before because we maintained the requirement of 
message and status code must be in the field you can have additional fields if you want to i'm going to save this but those fields will not be returned let's try this you can see that we just got the status code the message the x is not there although when we implement our own exception filters we can decide what we want to return for example we can include this x field here now that we've tested the built-in exception filter let's go ahead and implement our own filters and see different ways we can bind the filters so i'm just going to take an example here over here it says uh, http exception filter the way it actually works is that you just have a class you can name this whatever you want that implements exception filter and inside here in the in the method cache you are going to have access to the exception and the argument host so with this you can for example get information about the incoming request that is from the argument host if you need to and of course this is the exception that was thrown so what i'm going to do is to uh let me just do something else instead of this http exception filter i'm going to catch something else by the way talking about caching an exception you can see the decorator cache here here we can list out the exceptions we want this filter to cache that means for example if we list out a bad request exception and not found exception those are the only two exceptions that the class is going to cache in this case it is using the http exception but let's do something else so i'll come over here uh, in src let's say exception filters you can put this thing wherever you want to it is not a requirement here i'm going to cache uh, bad request come on not like that bad request just to follow the naming convention exception filter all right then i'll copy the sample code over here i'm going to copy this paste it here and just rename this to bad request instead of caching the http exception i'm going to cache bad request exception format this I don't know what's wrong with that guy okay so over here i'm caching only bad request exception and here you can decide what you want to return for example if you feel like you want to return the entire exception that is up to you you can put the guy here but i'm going to leave this i'm okay with what i'm seeing here the status code timestamp and the request part now that we have an exception filter the next thing is to bind it that is to apply the filter i added a breakpoint here so that we will know when the this part of the code executes let me go ahead and run this because the way it is now the filter is not applied anywhere and if i go back to the client postman and send the request you see that we get let me actually change the status code so you confirm we just get the this is handled by the default exception filter there are different ways we can bind the exception filter one of them is to at the method level for example if i want only this method or this specific methods to for the filter to apply to them so what i'm going to do actually let's say route handlers not just a method if i want this filter to apply to this route handler i'm going to say use filter not user use filters and new the the filter in question make sure to import that so in this case when a bad request exception is thrown this filter is going to kick in i'll send the request again now we have a 401 here send a 400 instead 
I will send the request again. Actually, I need to throw a bad request exception because I'm targeting a specific exception class. So this is going to be new bad request exception. Save that. And I'll go back to the client and send the request. What the heck? It is not working and I don't know why. Oh, this should be not filter, but an exception. Okay, so I will send this request one more time. You can see that the bad request exception filter kicks in because what we are trying to cache is bad request exception. If I change this to unprocessable entity exception, for example, it means that the filter is not going to cache bad request exception anymore. Okay? Because what we are trying to cache now is unprocessable entity. Let me go ahead and send this request. You can see that we just got the default exception filter handling this. I'm going to undo this again, save it and send the request. We should get the, the exception filter working. And if I go to the response here, you can see that this is the exact data I've chosen to return here. Another thing we can do is to, instead of instantiating this filter class by ourselves, to leave it to next uh, next.js application. This is actually encouraged if you can do it this way. So I'll go back to Postman and send the request and we get the same behavior like before. Now talking about different other, other ways you can bind the exception, you can do it at the method, at the class level. So at the controller level. I will test the thing again and the exception filter also works. Now, if you want to have this filter applied globally and not just to this controller or specific methods, what you need to do is to bind it in your module. I'll go to app module, for example, in the list of providers here, the way we do that is to say, uh, let's use this uh, syntax, provide app filter use class we supply the exception filter class like this now you can see that i've removed the filter from the controller but if i go and send the request again the filter still kicks in what you can also do is to cache more than one exception um, type at a time for example unprocessable entity uh, not found exception and so on and so forth let's go ahead and try this instead of bad request here i'm going to throw on processable entity that should give us status code 422 and i'll send the request still gets over there allow that guy to continue here we get the 422 unprocessable entity because it is part of the exceptions caught here another way to bind this exception let me come over here and comment this guy out because i'm going to come back to this one what we can do to bind this exception is to go to main.ts file here we can say app.use global filters new to recall that uh, the dependency injection that is managed by Next.js is not going to work here. So we need to instantiate the exception filter here. If I go back and send the request, once again, you can see that that works. So when you want to do it like this, you have to instantiate. But I prefer to bind in the app module for global filters, so I don't need to worry about instantiating that let's take a look at a cache of filter this is the kind of filter that will cache everything that means it will cache any http exception 
One thing about this filter is that it doesn't cache a specific type as you can see in this decorator here. The implementation is similar to what we have seen before and of course you can return whatever you want as a response. The key thing is to not cache a specific type. So I'll copy this and all exception filters. I'll go over here and add that file. All exceptions filter.ts. I'll paste the code. This is just similar to the other exception filter. The only difference is that this will cache everything. Let's test the all exception filter and then we look at what happens when you try to apply both this one that caches specific exception and this one that caches everything. I'll go to app module. Instead of this bad request exception, I'm going to cache all. I'm going to save this. Then in the controller, we are throwing whatever exception, HTTP exception. I'll send this request. You can see that that works. And if I come here and try not, not found exception, save that guy and send the request, we get a 404 not found. And this response is coming from the all exception filter. This is the response, the fields we are seeing there. But what happens if, let me go to app module and copy this and paste it. So what I want to do here is to have the bad request exception filter applied and the all exception filter. If you could recall, we have a breakpoint here. I'll try to I'll throw a bad request ex exception here. Bad request exception. And send the request. So, nothing happened at the breakpoint. Let me actually modify the response here so we can differentiate them. So, in the all exception filter, I'm removing this part, we should have only status code and timestamp. Send it again. You can see this is the guy that is working, the all exception filter. Even though we have bad request exception filter over here. The reason is because of the note somewhere in the documentation that when you have a cache or applied along with uh, the, the filter that cache specific class, the cache anything or the cache or should be declared first. And what that means is just to come over here and change the index, the position of the filters. So the cache or comes first and then the one that caches more specific thing. If I go back here and send this request again, you can see that the bad request exception filter kicks in just because we rearranged it in the proper order. Okay guys, this brings us to the end of the lesson on exception filters. I hope it makes sense. Until next time, enjoy coding.